Thank you, Larissa. Thank you so much, Freddie, for that really warm welcome and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to add my acknowledgement of the traditional owners um, and thanks to Uncle for giving us a formal welcome. Um, we here at the Greens acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded, so we stand here on Aboriginal land. It always was and it always will be. And until, as a nation, we can finally have treaties and sovereignty, then the journey for reconciliation will be a very long one, but it's one that I know we all pledge to commit ourselves to. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge um, a few other special people in the audience. Um, first of those is former Senator Claire Moore, who represented Queensland in the Senate for the Labor Party, not the party to which I belong, but who was an incredibly strong voice for social justice in all of its guises, for women and in particular for asylum seekers. So uh, I saw Claire earlier, I'm not sure if she's still here, but Claire, we really appreciate your presence here and thank you for all the work that you did within your party um, to, to improve the approach that this nation takes in all of our names. Um, I'd also like to mention that we've got a few Greens candidates here. We've got council elections coming up, so I'll be in strife if I don't introduce the lovely Donna, our candidate for Paddington, and Kath Angus, who are, is our Lord Mayoral candidate. Obviously, we have Greens everywhere seeking your support, and thank you for being here today. But folks, what a, what a rough time we're in at the moment as a nation. It feels to me like our government just does not represent the values of Australians, and yet, Someone voted them in. <laughs> so I, I haven't quite resolved um, the, the complex feelings that I have post-election. There are some good news stories, and one of those good news stories was the fact that for more than 10 years of fighting, the parliament finally passed laws to say that people who have sought asylum that are sick would be able to seek medical help. If they couldn't get that there on, on uh, Manus or on Nauru, that Australia would bring them here and treat them and meet their very basic needs. Now that was great, but what an absolute tragedy that that bare minimum, that shred, that sliver of human rights is all that we could get through the Australian Parliament when we've been fighting for years to end those offshore detention camps, those torture factories, to bring people who have broken no law, who have committed no crime, who are just wanting to start a new life here in our incredibly wealthy, prosperous and safe nation, where we pride ourselves on being the country of the fair go. What an absolute heartbreak that all we could get through the parliament after all those years of trying with all of those good other people in other political parties, all we could get was this Medivac bill and it only just passed and it was because they were in minority government at the time. And now here we are, what, eight, nine months later, and now the government who were re-elected now want to repeal even that minuscule protection for human rights. It, it is absolutely heartbreaking. Just when I think that the government can't find a new low, a new way to be cruel to people, they somehow manage to come up with one. You've got to give them points for being creative because, boy, they, they just keep finding a new bottom. There's a shred of hope. <laughs> And I'm sorry it's such a depressing reality, but you all know and you've all been fighting for so many years for justice for people who just want to start fresh and see their family safe and thrive and get an education, have their health care rights respected and maybe not be persecuted for their very beliefs and not be um, uh, under threat of violence just for leaving their doors. The shred of hope is that the government still doesn't have the numbers to repeal the Medivac Act. There's one person, because the Senate is a very important place and the balance of power is something that is very... Con this is a perfect example of why it's so important to think about your Senate vote when the next election rolls around. There's one person who still hasn't said how they're going to vote on this bill and that one person has the swing vote. So we know that the Labor Party is standing firm on keeping the Medivac laws and we thank them for that because can't always get a great result but I, I want to commend the Labor Party for being on the right side of history on at least this issue with the Manny Back Bill. We've got Centre Alliance, the old Xenophon Party. Obviously the Greens are supporting rights for people seeking asylum. Obviously the government want to find new, cruel, inhuman ways of depriving people of what human rights they've got. And sadly we know that Bernardi and One Nation are naturally lining up to back the government's agenda. It's Jackie Lambie who is the swing vote. And the reason I have a shred of hope is that the government still hasn't listed this bill for debate next week. We've got a Senate sitting week coming up and flying off to Canberra tomorrow. If they thought they had Jackie's vote to repeal Medivac, they would have that on the list for Monday. And in fact, we will know the moment they have her vote 
that bill will be lifted. So we've still got a task ahead of us as people that I think represent the best of Australia, that represent compassion, humanity, common decency. I mean, it's not too much to ask that sick people get medical help and that doctors assess when someone needs medical help, not members of parliament. I mean, it's not like you go to Peter Dutton to fix your car. You go to the experts when you need help. So someone called out before, GPs, not MPs, and I think it's a fantastic line. Well done to whoever came up with that. So it's a very important time and I would urge you to contact Senator Jackie Lambie and even if you've got Tasmanian friends, probably more powerfully, contact your Tassie contacts and your colleagues and your relatives, your family, anyone that um, is, a, is a Tasmanian and please ask them to call Jackie um, and just to remember that we're actually all human beings, we're all the same on the inside, we all want a safe life, we all want our family to have the best chance at a happy and healthy life. And that no government should deny that to someone. That 70 years ago, we signed up to say that of course we would respect their human rights. Look at how far this government has fallen. It, it is just heartbreaking. And my only consolation is that they are so out of step with Australian values that they can't last. But I thought that last time, so I'm a natural <laughs> optimist. So we live in hope. And I just want to finish by saying, I think you are all absolute heroes. There's some people here, including Freddie in particular, and Paul, and the other members of RAC, who have been coming out to rallies for as long as I've been in politics, and that's been longer than I care to admit. And I'm sure they were doing this for many years prior to that. So, Freddie, you are our conscience, and Mark, and Paul, I think I saw Paul earlier, but Mark's here too, of course, as he always is. You're absolute heroes, and you speak to the best of our values. And Uncle Bob, who... who gave that beautiful welcome that I thought was full of heart and compassion. So I want to let you know that it's powerful today and particularly on a hot and windy day in the middle of the day as we're facing bushfires on our very doorstep because our government not only does it not like um, people in need but it doesn't think much of climate science either but that's another story. You've braved the conditions and you've come out and I want to let you know that it is these sorts of demonstrations of real Australian values that led to the Medibac bill being passed in the first place. So you are having an impact. Dr Barry, you spoke so incredibly well. Um, uh, Sandra from the union who have been absolute stalwarts at supporting the, the cause of people in need who are just like us. Thank you so much for your strong values and for your courage and your compassion in speaking out. Thank you everyone for being here today. And we will hold our breath for the rest of the year and we will try like absolute hell to keep this uh, repeal bill off the agenda. So we've all got a part to play in that. Please make sure your phones run hot, your emails run hot, and that you get on the blower to your Tasmanian colleagues and get them to make sure that Jackie stands firm because we don't really know what's going to happen. But um, thank you for being good people in the world. Thank you for being here today. And please don't ever give up hope that we can make positive change. Thanks, everybody.